Hello and welcome to this video from Innovation Lab in Skahoy. We'll be looking at the TCP server device core today and it is designed to help you easily integrate ad hoc things, software, hardware, whatever you have that can work as a TCP client and talk to Reactor, which is a TCP server. You can basically inject values into Reactor. You can set up virtual triggers to execute actions on an ATEM switch or camera. You can also send values back from Reactor, so have it control your devices, or you can just have a shared memory. We'll look at all these uh, exciting options in, in this video, and uh, it's quite basic. This is Reactor, and I have set it up with the Frameshot Pro today, and let's just add the device right away so we can see uh, how this works. I'll search TCP server here in our list. You see, you find it right here and it has a little bit of description. Don't se select the generic model, just select this one. So we'll pick this. And uh, for the server, we need to uh, find a port that we want to start it on. And this is the default, so that's good enough for us. Uh, device ID number one would be okay. We could also set it to like, um, you know, 10, whatever. You can actually have multiple servers. So you could have a, you know, server one, two, 10 different ports. Make sure you do that. Um, model ID is fine. You can also limit it to a number of clients. That is the max. You can connect multiple clients if you want. Uh, okay, let's let's put in two. And you can also lock it down to IPs that are allowed to connect. But anyway, all this is set up and it's now ready. So uh, the, the first thing that I would really want to do with this would be to open a TCP connection to it. So on a Mac, you would use an application like NC. On a Windows, it would be Putty. And uh, it's basically Telnet on some other systems. But um, in this case, let me see, my blue pill is on this one. This is a blue pill device, Frameshot Pro, and I will open it on this server. So basically I'm now creating this connection and if I type in help, then you basically get the help text for the uh, TCP server device I just created. So to just prove to you that I have this limited number of clients that I can use, Let's try to make another connection, and that is a second connection. Great. I want to have two connections today, so we can see that it's all synced between these connections, which is very, very useful. And uh, let me just try to create a third one, so that you can actually see we have, yeah, a limit of two clients is um, executed right there. All right, so we have these two set up, and basically what I can do here is to set uh, values, as you'll see in this video, for instance, I could set, uh, you see, integers, which we'll do in a moment, int uh, hash mark uh, one, integer number one, equal, and then one, two, three. So if I do that, notice the other window window over here. It actually reports back that this value has now been set as I as I just changed it over here in, in this terminal. And inside of React, so that value is now available. All right, so the Frameshot Pro is the controller we want to map this down onto and see what we can do with it. But I want to just quickly give you an idea about what it is. Uh, if you go to darkroomskyhoy.com, you can see all our wonderful controllers on this list. So this is a really great place to browse our products. And for demonstration like this, it really doesn't matter which one we, we pick because any of our controllers can be mapped with the same way. You just see that they have different features like a Frameshot Pro has some um, monochrome displays and it has some color displays and it has four-way buttons and so on. So it's a quite simple controller and it's very often used as a sidekick to a PDC controller, like in this case for visual preset recall, where we can show thumbnails in the displays. And by the way, thumbnails like, like that can also be pushed over using the TCP server and that will come up in a later video here. But I've set up a, a Frameshot Pro and today we'll just be using it uh, directly from our simulated environment. So we have a, a basically an empty controller here and we'll put stuff onto it during this demonstration. Today we'll do most of our work in the configuration tabs. We'll quickly go here so we can customize our Frameshot Pro and it works by simply clicking any of these hardware components and in the inspector you select the action you want to apply. We want to do something with the Skahoy TCP server and um, in many of these categories you find predefined uh, actions that you could apply. We call them behaviors because they entail both the feedback on the component and also the action you will actually be doing as you press the button. In the case of the TCP server from uh, Skahoy, we do not have any such predefined things. So we'll just choose all parameters and that give us direct access to all the parameters in the device core. So we'll click on that little icon for parameters and then we'll select the integer parameter from this list. So we'll just pick it here and then we can choose which integer it is. We see up to 200 and we'll just pick number one. Actually, if you, if you want to see in the help from the connection we made over to the core, you see that uh, the range for integers and most other things are like one to 200. So that's like the limited range that we have 
defined for this device code. So we'll just pick this one and you see the value one, two, three that we actually had over in this one. If we type in int number one question mark, we'll actually see this is the value coming out of it. You can also type in list to have all reported. And then, oh, you see a lot of parameters like state, shift, memory A to L, flags, one to uh, 63. Those are Unisketch legacy parameters because this device code was made originally for Unisketch and now we have moved it over to Blue Pill and added a lot of stuff on top. And that's mostly the added stuff that we'll be dealing with because working with the flags and the memories is mostly to, for those of you who know Unisketch, you know, that kind of connects the dots for you back to the Unisketch universe because those were registers known from Unisketch. But you have, um, yeah, you can use them if you want, but you can also just go along with the new one. So, and that, that's what I'll be focusing on in this video. But notice how this value um, is actually reflected here. So the it could be tr interesting to actually try to, to change this value, right? And you see the moment I change it, it's updated in all connected clients and it's also updated in the display inside of Reactor. Now, if I, if I could, and that would be super cool if I could just have my little connection window here on the side and then move my web browser a little over then now we can see both. And if I go into simulation mode here and I press this button, you can see I'm increasing the value, which is the standard behavior of the change by step um, a variant of the change stepwise master behavior. And uh, you see those updates are coming over to our client here right away. And actually also the other client that we have this, this connected CCP client. So we have both of them. They will show us the updated value coming over. Okay, so we have these two windows here and let me just try again. You see it's all synchronous between these. So that's super cool. I wanna show you that we can do even more with this integer. We can actually um, set a range. Well. Okay, I'll, I'll just wait. Now I'll show you option list. So let's move on and um, go out of simulation mode, pick this one, select the parameter, what else can we do? Go up here, we'll select OPT option list value. Let's just put that one in. Let's choose option list value number two, uh, just to pick anything. Okay, so it shows us this because it currently doesn't have a value, but the moment we go into simulation mode and we actually click it, you can see that it gets a value. And now it's rotating between values from zero up to nine. And th there seems to be a predefined set of options here. I'll show you in a moment how we can actually change those options so that we get exactly the options that we would prefer. And that's also kind of a way to program Reactor. And that's super useful if you if you want to have like two or three options that uh, has labels inside of Reactor, you can push that in via the TCP server and um, then you can receive the, the values as you manage this from the buttons in, in the other direction. Let's click this one and add a binary type as well we call them booleans we pick this one let's just choose number 10 of course 10 1 2 the the numbers that i've chosen you have like 200 of each so you need to keep track of which one is is which and uh now i pick number 10 you see it's it's off by default uh let me just turn it on and off and once again you can see that i'm changing boolean number 10 between zero and ones in the terminals over here i can do it the other way to make sure you understand that. So I'll just uh, switch it off and you see it's now off. So we have taken these parameters from the TCP server device core and associated them with uh, master behaviors that gives them out of the box functionality on a Skyhoy panel as you press these buttons and we can manipulate the values both ways. That's what we have been seeing. So uh, over in these clients, if you type in list, I just wanna show you that because we have changed these three, integer one, option list number two, Boolean number 10, they appear in the list when I type in list. I, I wanna see the values. Everything else, all the other integers and Booleans and option lists, they are um, currently invalid. They are null, they are not, they don't have any values. This is why I don't show them. So in this way, you also, if, if you only change the values that you're actually using, you, you have a, a nice condensed list of the values that is being utilized in your application right there. So one cool thing is that for each of these, we can actually have a title. So for instance, int title number one equals, and what would this integer be? This might be my, uh, I'll call it source, whatever it is. All right, so I, I type this one in. So now I have a value, let's type in list. You see that I have this string value associated with integers that holds this string. Actually, this is just a register of strings with 200 strings you can uh, create um, with the um, key integer title. And I designed that so that if you wanna use values in this way, you could take your action here like that one 
to show more, then you go into default feedback and the title, which is currently taking the name, which is what you see up there, integer slash um, something. If you change that, you could basically refer it back to the string I just created. So you just go in here, select your device call, integer title, and that would be integer number one. And you don't need any modifiers in this case. Submit. Does it look good? Scarry TCP server slash 10. That is the device ID. Integer title. Okay. Integer number one. Perfect. It looks great. So this URL, which is called an IO reference, is now referring to it. And you see it says source now in the title field. And uh, what happens if I type in integer one equals uh, gain? You see that the, the title is changing in the display. So I'm now not only managing the value, which could be uh, one, two, three, or uh, three, 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 like that. I can change the value. I can change the title from my TCP connection. And of course, it works the other way still. That if I press this button, I have I have changes coming that way to to this one. So we can do the same for our option list. Of course, there we also have title. Let's just do this real quick. Click on this one, take it from the device core option list, choose the title. This would be, was it number two, if I'm not mistaken? So you need to keep that. Oh, I have this modifier name. Let's get rid of that one. Submit, submit, submit. And I just want to check. Yes, it was option list number two. And down here we have the title number two. Of course, that number two, if you were to create a master behavior, you might want to put in a constant to manage this. This, this could actually be quite a nice idea. You see right now it has uh, three dashes because um, if we type in here, we see there's actually for option title, there's no value currently. So it's just showing us an invalid value. But this could be OPT list. If I type that in, it's going to be the title up here. And I could do the same for the Boolean. I want to um, move on and show you how we can uh, create uh, value ranges and uh, custom option list because that is a very, very useful uh, concept. So inside here, if I take integer number one, no wait, inter actually help, help. Okay, so in help, it says integer range, okay, from one to 200, min and max, min colon max. All right, let's try that. So int range for number one equals, and I want to create a range from uh, minus four to 10, all right? Uh, so it seems to accept it. Let's list. Yes, it's listed here as, you know, the last values that I've created. And now if I move over here and I I operate this one, you see, okay, it jumped to 10. So that is the max value. As I change, it will be constrained into this value range. If I go the other way on the left edge of the four way button, it goes to minus four. So I have just in instructed reactor to keep the integer within the range minus four to 10. That's cool, right? We can do the same for option list. So again, we can use the help here. It says option labels. So we type in option labels for number two. And that would be equal to it is semicolon separated. So that could be colors red, green, uh, blue, amber, white. Okay, so we have five options. Just put that in. And actually, it already, you know, changed over because option number two is the value zero. So it shows us the, the, the red label. But just like the other ones, you see it is going to cycle through the options that are now available. It auto numerates these. So it goes from zero to four, zero to four. And you need to, in your application, associate the labels you have just injected with those values. So this is an obligation on your side. But see how easy it is to actually create these ad hoc parameters that you could respond to. You have reactor controlling that, showing the true labels that you want. And in your application, you can react to this and you can control it both ways. Let's end this video by creating a master behavior of some of this. And uh, if we go to this one, for instance, uh, no, wait, let's just um, to create a master behavior. That's basically um, what I want to do with the master behavior is to create a constant that will drive the selection of the integer in this case that we're using. So I'll go into my tree view here and then open up the tree. And then on the background layer here, I will create a uh, master behavior. Let me see master behaviors here. I can copy that. No, wait. 
Ooh, I need some more space. Nice. All right. So um, I'll copy that from B2. Okay. I'll create this master behavior by name. TCP server integer. This is something that you may see as master behaviors coming from Skahoy. Some uh, one-click behaviors you can you can pick. But let's just uh, go in here and then show more for for what we're doing. I um. So you see there's a reference here to the parameter in this master behavior to integer number one. And I would like that that number one, which we also use in the title to be driven by a constant. So I'll add a constant definition. So let's just um, call that, we can call it number, display name, integer, number. Uh, we could choose a description. We'll just pick this as an integer type. Um, minimum items, yes, at least one, that has to be one. Um, I don't know, default items may not be necessary. Okay, so confirm. So we'll just put this one in here and then I'll edit this one. And instead of that, I will insert behavior value, which would be a constant. And that constant would be the one that I just created called number, this one. All right, and down here, we should basically have the same. So we will create a behavior value Oh, not IO reference, but constant and then number submit. All right. So um, I, I'm sorry, I kind of like to check this in JSON to just see how this is all defined. You see, um, there's actually constant set number, but it doesn't have a value, but we'll set that when we are using it. And then we also have the definition number here. It all looks great. If we look at the IO references that we have for the Behavior in general, you see that instead of the number one, we have inserted a reference to the constant called number. And we also have that reference to the constant number found down here for the display title. So for me, this all looks absolutely correct. So now I want to use this master behavior. And it turns out that in this version of the UI of Reactor, I am not able to select it the way I'm used to. It should actually appear somewhere in these menus and I cannot find it. And this is probably because I'm actually running on a better version of this uh, part of the UI, which has been changed recently. So I have to do this manually, but maybe you'll be able to appreciate some of that anyway. This is the JSON code of the behavior. And what I want to do now is to change this one. I don't know how confirm got in there, but TCP server integer, just type this one in. We can select everything else, remove that. We should actually, because I already put in the I references into the master behavior TCP server integer here. So, oh, we need that come away. This is what the error message is. Save. Okay, we're good. So what you see now is that the UI responds. I can now hide this away. The UI responds by yeah showing the wrong master behavior because this is not true. It should have been TCP server integer. But the value field is there. And now notice, let's just move over. It says none right now because it doesn't have anything to show. But the moment I type in one, it is referring to my integer there. If I type in Let's try five. It's referring to an integer that doesn't exist, but we can create that. So if from the interface over here, we type in integer 599, integer title number five, my large number, it's going to be the title of the display. All right. So in this way, I have now created a master behavior and we could now apply that to multiple uh, buttons actually. I would hope so at least. So what we can basically do is we can make a copy and then uh, we could apply it over here, paste. And you'll see it's now added over here. We can then even select these. We can select these three and pull up our nice little batch editor. And inside this batch editor, you see that we have the number field over here. So let's deselect some of the others. But the number field is, is here and that is referring to the, um, to, to the integers that we're using. So now we could type in 10. 11 and 12. And that would now be integers 10, 11 and 12 managed by these uh, keys here. Let's just move that back. Okay, and um, let's go into this mode. So you know that if I press these buttons, then see this is integer 11 over here on this one. This is integer 10. And this was integer 12. So the actual number chosen is depending on the order I selected them in when I entered into the batch editor. But the super cool thing is that you I, I had one action, I copied it over, I used the batch editor to bring this up and have the ability to just change certain settings. You see the master behavior is the same over here, but the number that I want the constant number to carry to indicate the integer I'm changing is very, very easy to manage across multiple of these 
uh, application. So actually, if I wanted them in another order, let's just pick this one, this one, and this one. I'm holding down a modifier key on my keyboard, and I'll have those. Okay, so I want 10, 11, and 12, because I wanted the order to be different. Fine, done. Let's test it. So this is number 10. We see it over here, number 11 and number 12. Perfect. Thanks for watching this video. The first um, travel into the TCP server device core, how it works, how you can use that for integration, and have it like a shared memory space. In the next videos, we'll look at icons. We'll look at how we can use a, a string matrix and also virtual triggers. So that's going to be exciting. Please join me for that. Thanks for watching.